you. My name is Shub. I'm the vice president and franchise head for the immuno-oncology business in the U.S. here for AstraZeneca. I have been in um, the oncology or cancer side of things for the last 20 years. I've had the humble pleasure of working across multiple indications and tumor areas, including HCC. And I first worked in liver cancer actually back in 2007 when Nexavar was being introduced to, to patients for the first time. I've been at AstraZeneca for two and a half years and um, currently I'm focused on, again, immunotherapy. So across lung, liver and uh, GU at the moment, so bladder. So just in sort of quick summary, liver cancer or HCC is the third leading cause of cancer death and the sixth most, most commonly diagnosed cancer worldwide. Each year, you know, HCC is diagnosed in more than half a million people worldwide, including approximately 200,000 new cases in the US. And about 75%, so three quarters of those um, overall primary liver cancers in adults are HCC or hepatobiliary carcinoma. Chronic liver diseases such as cirrhosis can you know, lead to inflammation and over the long term can lead to the development of HCC. And so you know, that's a common link to liver cancer or to HCC is kind of the existence of liver cirrhosis. Um, about 80 or 90% of patients with, with liver cancer have some form of cirrhosis. Advanced stage liver cancer, the prognosis is unfortunately um, poor. And up until ESMO's readout, the five-year survival rate was really only you know, 7%. So as you can imagine, you know, seeing kind of new therapies for, for this patient population has been very important. One area to also talk about is um, the microenvironment or the environment of the liver cancer, which you know, provides a unique immune environment and therefore provides rationale for immunotherapy to play a role in, in treatment regimens to treat HCC. So currently, I think let's talk about advanced HCC. In the earlier setting, there are options for the surgery and removal of, of the tumor, as well as sort of an intermediate setting um, using chemoembolization, either with or without some form of systemic therapy in some places can be options. As the patient progresses to more advanced stage liver cancer, then um, you know, treatment tends to rely more on systemic therapy. Today, there are currently um, a couple of standard of care options, including the Himalaya regimen, which is a dual IO regimen um, of Imjudo plus Infimzi as, as an option for patients, as well as other regimens involving IO. Some patients um, who may not be tolerant for IO can also receive um, single agent TKIs, which are targeted therapies to treat the liver cancer. I think it's really important just to bring to perspective that for the STRIDE regimen, I should say, based off of the Himalaya trial, was approved in 2022 in the United States um, for treatment of first line liver cancer. And we have been continuing to follow up patients in the study. And so when we when it was approved in 22, there was long-term follow-up for three years for patients with HCC. We recently, last year, had released four-year overall survival data. So really continuing to follow patients um, for four years. And now at ESMO, we have released five-year data, which really talks about um, patients, you know, the proportion of patients that are predicted to still be alive at five years. This is unprecedented in this, in this setting for advanced HCC, and it's the first time that we are seeing data out to five years for patients with first-line hepatobiliary cancer. And this is the longest survival follow-up um, to be reported in a phase three study in this setting. And the data that we presented at ESMO showed that after a single priming dose of Imjudo added to Imfimzi, the risk of death was reduced by 24%, compared to serafinib, which is a TKI that I mentioned earlier, with a hazard ratio of 0.76. So really statistically significant data. What's really important, or what that means in terms of um, context for patients, is that about 20% of patients are estimated to still be alive at five years, versus only 10%, or actually uh, less than 10%, with the control arm. So a doubling in patients that are likely to be alive at five years with this regimen. One last thing I'll say um, about STRIDE is in a prior meeting, we had also presented 
data pertaining to liver preservation. So if you think about hepatobiliary cancer, treating physicians have to think about two things when they're treating their treating the patient. One is overall liver health and the other is treating the tumor to reduce the burden of the cancer. Last year, we also presented our liver present prevention data, which showed that you know there was no continued detriment to the overall state of the liver with usage of Stride. So for the first time now, for patients with first line HCC, we see the hope for survival at five years, as well as data showing that the liver function is preserved over that same time period. Frontline practitioners have a choice. They have a range of treatment regimens that they can choose from. And like, like I mentioned, two standard care options. We believe that um, Stride really provides a flexible option for patients in terms of not just providing this survival data, tolerable safety um, profile, but also um, simplicity of use in terms of this simple dosing and lack of other you know, needs for, for the patient. We've seen since the regimen was approved in 22, really um, you know, a broad use of, of the regimen across multiple patient types because of those three elements and can be rather flexible for patients dependent upon their needs. And so therefore, we believe five-year overall survival on top of all of that really allows physicians to, to think about um, or have a conversation with patients around what is important to them and milestones ahead of them and, and have another choice now that can offer that hope. I think we have everything we need, Shub, but I'll just ask one final question. Is there anything you would like to ask, add to this conversation, maybe a question I'm not asking or a topic I'm not covering? I think just to sum up, you know, we see, you know, really exciting milestone here in terms of a new advent for patients with HCC. We are super excited to be able to introduce five years to the conversation for patients. And, you know, we, we will continue our commitment on um, improving outcomes for patients across the paradigm of HCC.